Hello kids, welcome to today's class with Mr. Ahige. Today in qualitative reasoning, we are going to be looking at two concepts in exercise 11. We are going to be looking at adding and subtracting using the analog clock face. Well, you want to see the analog clock face? Well, let's go. Okay, this is the analog clock face. Now, from what you can see here, we have numbers from 1 to 12. They normally represent 12 hours of the day. But today, we are going to be making use of it to add and to subtract. What is going to surprise you is that the results are not going to be the usual results you are used to in mathematics, okay? That is the fun of it. But we are going to start. Let's go back to the beginning. All right, now, look at the numbers we have here. We have 9 plus 2. 9 plus 2. And normally that will be 11. And how do we do this on the face of the clock? Well, on the face of the clock, whenever we are asked to add, we try to move in this direction. We call this clockwise movement. We move in this direction, like this. Okay, so we call it clockwise movement, and that represents addition. All right, now if we are asked to subtract, we move in an anti clockwise direction, like this. Okay, so that is subtraction. So when subtracting, you count backward in that direction, you count backward. Then when adding, you count forward, okay? That is clockwise direction. All right? Having said that, we are going to try to add the first question here. 9 plus 2. 9 plus 2. Well, if we are looking at 9 plus 2, the first thing we do is to locate the 9. That is our 9. And because it's a plus, we move in a clockwise direction to from 9. That is 1 and 2. Now, the number you are seeing is 11. So that is why 9 plus 2 on the face of the analog clock is 11. All right? So this look a bit easy because it's the result you will get when you do it normally. Now let's go back. We see a, an 11 plus 4 giving, giving us 3. Normally you will get a 15. Alright? What you get is what? 15. Well, let's go back to the analog clock and see how 3 was taking or gotten. Well, if we are asked to add 4 to 9, sorry, 4 to 11, 4 to 11, we first of all locate the number, which is what? 11. 11. Then we add a 4 by moving clockwisely. 1, 2, 3 and 4. So you can see the number yourself. It's a 3 you see there. So that is why 11 plus 4 is 3. Kids, isn't that interesting? Well, let's do more. Okay. Um, we go back to the question. We have 7 minus 6. 
It says 7 minus 6 is 1. Well, let's find out from the face of the clock. Alright. Now let's see how this can happen. Alright. 7 minus 6. First of all, we locate our 7. Well, minus means to move in an anti-clockwise direction. That's backward. And so we move 6 because we are subtracting 6. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Well, you can see why it is 1. 7 minus 6 on the face of the clock is 1. Alright, now let's take one more question on subtraction. This one is interesting. 2 take away 3 is 11. Wow. How can you do that? I mean, how can you get that kind of an answer? Well, let's find out from the face of the clock. Alright. Now, first, we locate our first number, which is the 2. Because it's minus, we are going to move in an anti-clockwise direction. That is backward. And because this, we are removing the 3, so we can't walk backward 3 times. 1, 2, 3. Wow. What can you see here? 11. So, on the face of the clock, 2 minus 3 is 11. Well, it has been interesting in the first concept. There are some questions there in your quantitative book, in your exercise 11a. Do attempt the questions and follow the same procedure. Now let's move to the last concept in this lesson. Now this one is the magic box. The magic box. In this magic box, we have numbers arranged in the box, in the large box, and smaller boxes inside. When you look at them and count, you discover they are a total of nine different numbers. Nine different numbers. Now, in this magic box, what you notice is there's something common to the lines that are horizontal. When I mean horizontal, I mean across like this. Horizontal. Horizontal, right? This is what we call horizontal. Now, something is common. What is this common thing? We discover that when we add 1 to 8 and then 6, what you get is a 15. Then we try it here. What you get is another 15. 10 plus 5 plus 0. We try here. 4 plus 2, 6 plus 9, 15. So they all give us the same number. This is magical, you know. So they give us the same number. Now, what happens if these numbers are added across? That is from the top to the bottom. Down like this, like this, like this. Well, if you add uh, the numbers properly, you will discover it's 15 also. Yes, 15. So, whichever way you try to add this number, horizontally or vertically, you get a 15. Well, the numbers you are going to see in your quantitative book might not necessarily be 15, but it simply means the same concept is going to be there. The numbers, when you are able to get an answer for one, you know, vertical line is going to represent the same thing in the horizontal line. So if you get a 10 as total, you're also going to get a 10 as total in the horizontal. All right? Okay. Now, having said that, when you look across like this, you also get a 15. You look across like this, you also get a 15. So, 
whichever way you try to add up the numbers you are always going to get a 15. now let's try something out if for example here was empty there was no number at that spot so i only have one and eight well if i'm asked to find what is in that empty box i simply go to a different line like this one and tell myself well 10 plus 5 plus 0 is 15 then 1 plus 8 is 9 so what must i add to 9 to get a 15 well it is very simple 15 15 minus 9 what will be the answer to this it's very simple it's a 6 so that is how I know what is missing in the box it's fun you can try it for yourself go to your quantitative book look at the questions you will enjoy playing this game all right i want to thank you for watching this is exercise 11 go to your exercise 11 of your book go through it follow the same concept do exercise 11a and 11b and this will be marked in your class thanks for watching again i'll see you in the next class